My nephew, Mr. Darcy, is expected here in the course of the few weeks, along with his cousin. Colonel Fitzwilliam, Miss Elizabeth Bennet. And are you pleased with Kent, Miss Bennet? Yes, thank you. And your family, they are well? Yes, thank you. My elder sister has been in town these three months. Have you happened to see her there? No, I have not been so fortunate. Mr. Darcy has told me much of you, Miss Bennet. I believe you are fond of music. Do you know this piece? What's that you're saying, Fitz William? Are you talking? Are you telling? What are you telling, Miss Bennet? We are speaking of music, Mum. Then I must have my share in the conversation if you're speaking of music. There are a few people in England, I suppose, who have more true enjoyment of music than myself, or a better natural taste. If I had ever learnt, I should have been a great proficient. And so would Anne, if her health had allowed it. How does Georgiana get on, Darcy? Ah, uh, she cannot expect to excel if she doesn't practice a good deal. I assure you, madam, she practices very constantly. I have told Miss Bennet several times that she will never play well unless she practices more. I've told her to come to Rosings every day and play on the pianoforte in Miss Jenkinson's room. She'd be in nobody's way, you know, that part of the house. You mean to frighten me, Mr. Darcy, by coming in all this state to hear me? I won't be alarmed, though your sister does play so well. Miss Bennet finds great enjoyment occasionally professing opinions, which in fact are not her own. Your cousin will teach you not to believe a word I say. It is provoking to retaliate, and such things may come out as will shock your relations to hear. Pray let me hear. I should like to know how he behaves among strangers. Hmm. Prepare yourself for something very dreadful. The first time of my ever seeing him at a ball in Hertfordshire, he refused to dance, though gentlemen were scarce, and more than one young lady was sitting down in need of a partner. I had not at that time the honour of knowing any lady, simply beyond my own party. And nobody can ever be introduced at a ball. I have not the talent which some people possess of conversing easily with those I have never seen before. And my fingers do not move easily over this instrument. But then I have always supposed it is my own fault, because I will not take the trouble of practising. No one admitting to the privilege of hearing you play could think anything wanting. What are you talking of? Three times this week? Mr. Darcy has met you three times in the grove? Oh, my dear Eliza, he must be in love with you. Perhaps he has a difficulty of finding anything to do at Rosings. Gentlemen cannot always be within doors. I suppose he has a fondness for walking, as I do. He certainly looks at you a great deal but goes on ten minutes altogether without opening his lips. The first time... There grows a sweet myrtle, let foreign lands reckon, where bright beaming summers exalt the perfume. There dear to me on lawn a glen a green brecken, with a burn stealing under the long yellow bruise. Mr Bingley and his sisters are well, I hope, when you last left London. Perfectly so, I thank you. I think I've understood that Mr Bingley has not much idea of ever returning to Netherfield again. I should not be surprised if he were to give it up as soon as any eligible purchase offers. The second time? Where the bluebell and gowan lurk lowly unseen. For there, lightly tripping among the wild flowers, are listening the linnet of wonders, my love. Mr. Collins appears to be very fortunate in his choice of a wife. I am not certain that I consider her marrying Mr. Collins as the wisest thing she ever did. Yet she seems perfectly happy, and in prudential light, it is certainly a very good match for her. 
it must be very agreeable for her to be settled within so easy a distance of her own family and friends. Fifty miles? I should never have said that Mrs Collins was settled near her family. It is a proof of your own attachment to Hertfordshire. Anything beyond the very neighbourhood of Longbourn, I suppose, would appear far. The third time? The whole bridge is the breeze in their gay sunny valleys And cold Caledonia's blast on the wave He wanders as free as the winds of his mountains Save love's willing fetters, the chains of his love. So this grove is where you walk while the others are calling on Lady Catherine? Yes. I feel quite beyond the reach of Lady Catherine's... Curiosity. I do hope you'll be comfortable there when you next return to Kent. Comfortable at Rosings. Whatever could he mean? <laughs> 